Good evening. I want to thank you for having me here. Tonight I want to talk about an issue that I see with believers. The title of the message is, Where Are You, God? Without faith, it's impossible to please Him, for he that comes to God must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. We find that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It's one of the things that I find distressing as a believer. People ask, where is God? They say, where are you, God? Where are you, God, in the midst of this tragedy? Why is there so many school shootings? Why is there so many things going on here in this country? Why are we in such turmoil? People blame God for their problems. God, why did you allow this to happen to me? You know, on social media, and you know, you're online, you see, you see different, people post different things, and you see different comments when you're reading the news articles or whatever. And one of them says, God, why is there so many school shootings? And God answers, because I'm not allowed in. You see, we have kicked God out of society. We have kicked God out of the public square. We have kicked God out of every aspect of our lives, and Christians have even kicked God out of their own lives. And we, don't, we say, God, we don't want you to be around. Don't interfere with our life. I got it under control, but when I need you, I'll give you a call. We treat God like that. I can understand why unbelievers do it, but, but what distresses me is when I see other Christians doing it. Christians in our churches who, who, do, who do this stuff, who believe this way. I hear phrases from Christians, you know, Christ gave us the victory. He wants us to have an abundant life, and, and for us to live it, we have to follow him. I hear people say, I'm always broke, I'm always sick. I'm tired of people messing with me. I hate this. I hate that. Why does things never goes right for me? Every time I turn around, something bad is happening. Where are you, God? We shake our fist at God like it's his fault that things happen in our lives that are bad. I see, I see fellow Christians will post stuff online and they'll say, smile, God loves you. And the next post online will say some kind of expletive. They'll be, or they'll be saying, like, it's Saturday night, and I'm going to go out and have some beer, some wine. And then they'll follow that up by, a, well, God loves you. If you love God, please share this as your status. Otherwise, if you don't share this picture of Jesus as your Facebook status, you'll know that I'll know that Jesus, you don't love Jesus. Well, I don't know. When I get to heaven, I don't think God's going to ask me if I updated my Facebook status or my Twitter status to show him I love them. Hey, how did we love God before the social networks came out? I don't need to share or hit the like button to prove to somebody that I love God, especially when the same person is going to put up a filthy post later on about about some some of their ex, escapades or something they watched on television or or glorifying some kind of sinful behavior but we as Christians we need to stop blaming God for the things that go wrong in our lives many times I'll see people their lives are in turmoil They'll say, why? I don't understand. Why doesn't God help me? I prayed and I did, I did pray. I prayed to God. Why is he doing this to me? And then I see people who will come back and they'll ask you to pray for me. They'll say, I'm at the end of my rope. I don't know what to do. Why? I said, did you pray? Well, I say pray. I pray to ask God to help me. Where are you, God? Where are you, God? The problem that I see is not where is God, but where are you? 
If you're a Christian and you're listening to me, where are you at? Are you trusting God for everything? See, God, God gave us authority over sickness, disease, and demons. God gave us the, the authority over Satan. Now, does that mean life is going to be peachy and you're never going to have a problem? No, but God will help you in the fire. Just like when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into fire, there was the fourth person there, and Nebuchadnezzar said, oh, that looks like the Son of God. Well, God will meet you in the fire if you're going through a trial. Why do you go through trials? Because you do live, we do live in a sin-filled, broken, fallen world. But I don't know how many times I've counseled people, encounter people, where the first, the first thing I will do, if I counsel somebody and I don't know them, I'm going to say, what's your relationship with Christ? And they're going to say, and a lot of them say, well, I have one, I'm saved. Okay, you're saved. Where well, you go to church and I don't. Why? Well, every church I go to, they're hypocrites. Or I've gone to three churches in the area, and I didn't like none of them, and I didn't like any of the preachers, and I didn't like this, and just fill in the blank, whatever reason it is. You say, okay, so you went to three churches, but the rest of the thousands of churches in the area that are Bible-believing churches you can now disqualify because the three churches you attended were not good. Okay, that makes perfect that makes perfect sense. That's like I don't like going to Walmart, so I'll never shop at Target or Kmart because all the department stores now are evil. You see, that's that's the kind of flawed logic that some professing Christians have. I do know, I will give, I will justify some of the reason because there are a lot of churches that are dead. And what they're looking for is good churches, not just churches that will love them, but churches that are spirit-filled. You see, there's, there's one, one, of, one of my other pet peeves in this world, I'm going to chase a rabbit here for a second, is power. Power. There's churches that do not have the power of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in it. The thing is, my, and my thought on that is, why does the witches and the New Agers have power, but we're not allowed to? I'm not allowed to cast a demon out, but a witch is allowed to put a demon on me? That don't make one bit of sense to me. Why would my father, Abba, Father, God, tell me I'm not allowed to cast the devil out of somebody? Why would my Abba, Father, God say, too bad, my son, I love you, but I want you to be sick, and you should be sick because I'm trying to teach you a lesson. But yet the New Agers and the, and, the, and the witches can go out and find all kinds of New Age healing and Reiki, 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 whatever you want to call it, and whatever else is out there, but we're not. Some, oh, but that died after the apostles and the canon of Scripture was up. Who said that? What, name the chapter and verse that said after the Council of Nicaea, when the canon of Scripture was put together, that somehow the miracles all of a sudden ended, and all we have now is, oh, we've got God's Word. Yes, we do have God's Word. God's Word says to lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. What is wrong with people? So going back to what I was saying, when there's people like, are you saved? I need help. I need help. Are you saved? Yes, I'm do you attend church? For? No, 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 no. I don't go to church anywhere. No. No. Oh, but the churches are perfect, but you are. I've had professing Christians tell me how hypocritical some pastors are and some people who go to church are. But you know, every other word began with a, with a letter of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, you figure out which letter. But there's people, they're saying, they're saying, whack -a, whack -a, whack -a, blank this and blankety blank that, and, I, they, and these blankety blank pastors and these blankety blank hypocrites in the church. And I said, oh, I see, yeah, you're so much better than them. You're saying the F word every other, in, in every other, uh, in every other sentence here, but you're so much more high on a higher spiritual plane apparently than I am because I don't even use that word. Do you read the word of God? Do you praise God? Oh no. Why not? You said you were saved. Don't you love God? Oh, I, I ain't got time for that. Oh, you don't. You don't have time for that. 
You have time for them when the bottom drops out, though, right? Well, you mean you don't? I I can't understand. I can't understand. I mean, I don't know. There's, you know, I can't understand the Bible. Want to get a translation you can understand? Find a good one. Find people. Do you read the word? Do you praise God? Oh, no. Well, what do you listen to then? Well, I listen to rock. I listen to country. Oh, okay. You know the words to them songs, though, right? You know the words to Stairway to Heaven. You know all the Led Zeppelin songs. You know all the Black Sabbath songs. You know what Miley Cyrus is up to. But you don't dig into the Word of God. You know what else blows my mind? It's professing Christians that listen to ACDC. I'm on the highway to hell. Why are you singing that for? <laughs> Well, why are you singing that? I get, when I became a Christian, I said, I mean, I don't want to sing that. I'm not, a, no, I'm not on no highway to hell. It wasn't the time I listened to it. You know, but I'm not on no highway to hell. I'm on the highway to heaven. Do you read the word? Do you praise God? So what you do is, what people do is, and these are, these are not just some people. These are a lot of people. These are people even in my own church that I go to. They don't spend the time with God. And they wonder why God's not answering their prayers. If I, was, if I wanted to be your friend, what would I have to do? I would have to show myself friendly, right? I would have to come up to you and to say, hey, let's hang out, let's go to my house, let's sit down, let's talk, let's have dinner. How did, how did people, how did you meet your wife, your wife, your husband, boyfriend, girlfriend? We, you didn't just like, Call them up once a week only when you were depressed and said, Oh, honey, I love you. I want to sit down and talk. And in the other two weeks, you're out carousing around with, any, with anybody, with everybody else. That wouldn't work that way. How long would you be married if you'd done that? If I was to go to my wife over here and I was to say, Well, Julie, I'm just depressed. I'm upset. And, and, and well, I'll call you in a month from now. You know, I'll talk to you next month. I know we're married and I know we... we uh, we have a covenant before the Lord, but I'm I'm only going to talk to you when I don't when I'm depressed, and the rest of the time I'm just going to go out and I'm going to hang out with my friends, maybe other women, I don't know, whatever I want to do. And then, but then when I need you, you'll be. How long would she be married to me? It wouldn't last long. Nobody, nobody in their right mind would be married to a husband or a wife had done that. You would never even think of treating your friends or your job. Here's the other thing, too. It's like, it's like okay, you, you, you leave the church because somebody offended you. But yet you'll go to work on Monday morning, and ten, you'll get ten times more of the offense on a Monday morning <coughs> at, some, at some jobs than you will in your church. Now, how many people say, I quit going to church because they were offending me. They said something I didn't like. Well... I'll tell you what, there's jobs I had where every day there was things I didn't like, and if I'd have got up and left or I'd have said something, I'd have been fired. You can't do that. Your logic is flawed if you do that. It's twisted. So are we going, are we living for him? I go to church on Sunday. I read that half a Bible verse every day in the devotional. <coughs> and then they explain it. I pray over my food. I love the Lord. I make sure because I'm pious. And I want everybody to know when I go to the diner or Olive Garden or Red Lobster or the coffee sh Starbucks that I'm a Christian. I pray over my food. That's nice. It's good. You should do that. But then that server did not refill my glass of water. And I told her what I thought of that. I left her have it. I left her know how bad that was. How dare you not refill my soda? I will say one thing, though. If you don't give me my grated cheese for my spaghetti and meatballs, I, you know, I, have to, I will in, in love tell you, remind you about it. But seriously, how many times... Do we, how many times we pray over our food and we're rude to the server and then we don't give them a tip because, hey, that $2 an hour they make, 
for a, you know that sub minimum wage they make good money other people will give them tips you know as a Christian when you go out to eat you should be a good tipper you should be one of the best tippers but I gave them a Bible track well you know what they don't care they want to know you care about them they're not going to look at your track if you don't give them a, you don't put a, a, a few bucks in there with it Some of us go to church on Sunday and we say, that's it. I don't need to go on Wednesday night. I don't go. I don't need to go to the men or women's group because that's on a Saturday. And Saturdays I do other things. And, and oh, I don't, I got to get up and go on a Saturday morning, go to a prayer breakfast. Yo, know, I don't need to do that. I don't need to go. I don't, if there's a Sunday night service in your church, I don't need to go there. I don't need to tithe. I don't have the money. I mean, I know the pastor says in Malachi 3, it says, I will open, to prove, prove your, uh, uh, you know, test me, and I will open up the windows of heaven. I know it says it, but Jesus didn't say it in the New Testament. Oh, really? Okay, Jesus, Jesus, who's the Son of God, who wrote the Bible, who taught the synagogues all the scripture, would have taught Malachi 3, but at that time, because he taught all, he had all the scrolls from. From the, from the entire Old Testament at that time. So yes, he would have, even though it's not written down in some places. And you could argue, oh, the Apostle Paul said this. Well, I don't... Well, you follow, all, scripture is given, all Scripture is given for reproof and correction. That's another thing, you know, when people say, well, I didn't see Jesus say it. Jesus didn't say it. Well, yes, he did. Because he taught in the synagogue which means he had all the scripture, which means it's fair to say at some point he probably, there's no word that Jesus didn't, didn't agree with the scriptures he taught. If he did, he'd have told us. So that, that argument doesn't work. In Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaken the assembling of yourselves together as the manner as some is, exhorting one another so much more as the day as you see the day approaching. Where are you, God? Do you pray? Do you read his word? Do you go to church? Iron sharpens iron. I like that verse because that's so, it's so true. I find, that, I find that when I'm in church or I'm just... Just, just hanging out with other believers, you know. Even, even outside of church, when you're talking about the Lord, you're sharpening each other. You're sharpening your mind. You're, you're, you're. It's good that you should be around other believers. So if you're not in the Word, you're not doing anything for God. You're not serving Him in any capacity, and you don't even want to hang out with with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Then why, why should God honor anything in your life? If you're only going to go to him when you want him for something. We've got plenty of time for pleasure. Second Timothy 3 says that in the latter days people will be lovers and self lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Do you know it takes about five minutes to read a chapter out loud? To carefully read one full, I don't mean psalms. Oh, let me read Psalms 150. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't mean, I don't mean, let's, oh, I memorized the verse. Jesus wept. Okay, that's good. What I'm talking about is to read 10 full chapters of the Bible takes probably an hour or less. If you're reading 10 Psalms, it would take maybe 15, 20 minutes to read them carefully. I mean, not just like, not just do the, uh, what was it called, the Evelyn Wood speed reading course. Okay, I mean, hey, if you're that good and you can retain the knowledge, that's great. And you can, then that'd be good. Then you should read 30 chapters a day if you're that good. But to just to read, just, just read one. I don't know what to read. Didn't go like this if you have to at first. It didn't get a plan. You know something, on my iPhone, there's plans galore. There's the Bible in one year. There's the Bible in so many months, so many weeks. There's the Old Testament by this guy, the New Testament by this guy. You, there's so many plans out there. Just pick one. I don't want to commit to the 90-day plan because I, I don't know if I can keep up with that. I said that. I'm, hey, I'm guilty of saying that. You know what happened? This past year, I read the 90-day plan. 
first time I ever read it. But you know how long it took me to read it? Oh, about, 100, about 150 days. Because <laughs> I didn't miss. I didn't get them all in, or I got part of it in, or, you know, things got, my flesh got in the way, other things got in the way, busyness got in the way. But I still went through it, still finished it, finished the course. But we have plenty of time to check our Facebook page. We have plenty of time to watch the movies. We have plenty of time for our recreation. Don't take my Comcast cable from me. Don't take my DirecTV or my Dish Network. I wonder how many people, how many professing Christians, if they said, if you deny Christ, you can keep your Comcast for the rest of your life. If you, but if you don't deny Christ, I am taken away. You will never have DirecTV, Dish Network, cable, or anything ever again if, if you don't deny Christ. I wonder how many Christians would say, you know what, I need my ESPN, and I need my MSNBC, and my Fox News, and my and my sci-fi channel, I'll, I'll pretend, I'll just tell them I deny Christ just, you know, so I can keep it, you know. How many people would, how many people would, professing Christians would deny Christ if they were, had an ironclad guarantee they would never lose their cable? And how many people wouldn't deny Christ if there was an ironclad, ironclad guarantee they would lose it? Think about that. Think, think about it. What would you be willing to give up? If we, if we go under pro, prosecution in this country tomorrow, what would we be will, would we be willing to still follow Christ? If a mob of people came breaking into this store here and started rounding us up and putting us on the back of a, a Hummer or some big, large military vehicle, how many of us had said you deny Christ and we will let you live? How many of us would, would, would deny him and how many of us would say, you know what, just let me die? I'd rather die than to deny my Savior. Hey, let's think about that. Peter, who was with Christ in the flesh, did it. But it's something just to think about is working on a relationship with God. So, where are you, God? Where are you, God? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because I rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest in me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of God. I will also forget thy children. But let's, that's in Hosea 4, 6. Look at the first part of that verse. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There's a reason why you pray and you get into the Word. The reason for that is, is you get the knowledge of God. You get to know what God thinks. You get to know what He thinks. And you get to build up your faith. You, that's, that's key. Because this is why, it's not because we, you know, I'm not saying read your Bible and pray because there's no ulterior motive for me. I don't win or lose if you, you know, read or don't read. You lose if you don't read. You're the one that loses if you don't. You see, you see, if you don't read the word, then how do you know how how do you know how to pray over your finances? How do you know how to pray over your children? How do you know how do you know how to hear the voice of God to direct you to make good decisions? Sometimes we make bad decisions because we don't seek the Lord. Sometimes we look at a decision and say, Wow. This is really great. And it may be a very good thing that we're running after. It, it may be, there may be nothing wrong with it. But God, who sees the beginning to the end, says, no, don't do it. And because something, something's not going something's not going to work here. The Bible is our instruction manual. If we read the word, we can live victoriously. Will our problems go away now? They're not all going to go away. We live in a fallen, broken world. Things are still going to happen to us. There's still Satan. Look, Satan's job is to kill, destroy. Satan wants you dead. 
Satan wants to give you sickness. We, we fight not against prince of, you know, uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities. We have to, we, we, you know, we, we live, as long as we live in this world and we live in this flesh, you know, there, there's going to come a point when we're going to get sick. There's going to come a point when somebody's going to want to do something to us. We're not, we're not exempt from, Jesus wasn't exempt from persecution, neither are we. All scripture is given by inspiration to God is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. How do we know how to live for God or to pray to God or to ask God to help us if we don't bother to spend the time with him? If we don't bother to spend the time in his word, in his word. And then Luke, Luke 1, I mean Luke 9, 1 and 2 says he called the 12 disciples together. He gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Jesus gave us, we're his disciples. It didn't just stop at 12. <laughs> you know, we're his disciples. We have the authority over things. I didn't know. How do you know now? See, this is what I say. If you're saying, where is God? Where is God? Get to know God. You'll know you have the authority. And you, and, and, and you can pray and you can ask for favor. Well, my husband, my wife needs a job. Where's God? Why won't God help him get a job? Pray and ask for favor. You have favor with God. You're the child of the King of kings and Lord of lords. Get that into your head. That's better than being the king of the queen of Queen Elizabeth or Prince Charles or the other prince that's over there that just got married. And, and you know, it's, it's better than any dignitary. We, we, we have favor with God. If you're saved, and you're, you shouldn't be saying, where's God? You should be saying, where am I at? You cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. We abuse the grace. What's our character like? What are we like behind closed doors? What do we say when somebody cuts us off here on the highway or almost nudges us off the road? Oh, I see that too. I'm going to give my peace of my mind. I've seen posts online where they justify sexual sin. You know the story about the harlot that was going to be stoned to death and the Pharisees were going to stone her and, and Jesus, they'll put up a post and say, your sins are forgiven. And they'll use that to justify sexual sin. But they forget the part that says, go and sin no more. <laughs> How many of us as Christians consult psychics, horoscopes? If you're consulting a psychic, if you're reading your horoscope, you are in spiritual idolatry. Because you are consulting something... See, the Holy Spirit will give you, you're consulting something other than God. The Holy Spirit will give you a word of knowledge. There's no reason to consult horoscopes, psychics, or anything else like that because the Holy Spirit will direct you. The Holy Spirit will, oh, but this, oh, but this Long Island medium, she's so accurate. You know why she's accurate? Because she got a demon telling her things about yourself. That's why a demon, it's called a, it's called a familiar spirit. That's why these psychics are so accurate. Don't don't be don't be don't be deceived. Don't be deceived into this stuff. If you're a Christian, listen listen. If you're a Christian out there watching this broadcast, don't be deceived by these people. Don't be deceived by the junk the celebrities go and tell you. They they they're not going to lead you. Only there's only going to, there's only one person that's going to lead you on the right path, and that's Christ. Jesus. Jesus. That's right. And why do we entertain ourselves with raunchy stuff on TV? Why do we entertain with stuff, that, the, the very stuff that God says I hate? And then we have the audacity to be upset with God when things don't go our way, if we don't honor God. Look, I said a while ago, you wouldn't treat your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your job, your job, your, 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 your best friend from high school the way we treat God. We would never treat... We, Somehow we think it's all right to treat God differently. What about repentance? What about witnessing? Oh, I, don't, I hear Christians, I don't want to push my beliefs on them. You don't want to push your beliefs. Well, the rest of the world, they don't mind pushing their beliefs on you. 
Look at our government. I'm not going to get started there. I got 15 minutes left, and now this will take me two hours if I start on that trail. And that's just getting started. Well, let me tell you something. When you have a health care system where their ad encourages young ladies to take birth control pills because we'll pay for you to sleep around. <laughs> you know what else you're doing? You're paying for you're paying for oh, that's okay. You won't you you won't have to worry about being the father of six kids to three different women. You just tell her to take the pill and the government will pay for it. What kind of world do we live in? We're promoting sin, debauchery. Oh, but that's not it's just a it's it's a it's a lifestyle. It's okay. It's not okay. It's never okay. I, I'll tell you, God, he needs to change for the 21st century, doesn't he? Poor God, he's he's just sitting up there in heaven, so narrow minded, saying, I I just can't get with the times. I mean, you know, I'm I'm billions of years old. I mean, I know God doesn't have a beginning, but I'm just kind of saying, you know, God needs to get up with the 21st century. Don't he know that it's all right to have sexual sin in your life? It's fine now. It's, we got condoms for that now. We can, you know, diseases, just go, you know, we'll give you an injection. You'll be all right. It's not all right. It's never okay. God's word did not change. God's word did not change. God is, oh, but God is love. Yeah, he's love, but there's a consequence for rejecting him, and that's called hell. We trivialize God's forgiveness into this micro prayer that we call the sinner's prayer, except the people praying it don't believe they're sinners. They don't understand. This is where we got lost as a Christian church, is we're just saying, I'll oh, come and ask Jesus to come into your heart, and everything will be hunky dory, ginger, peachy, keen, and neat. But hey, you got to have some repentance. You've got you to understand why are you coming to Christ? As Christians, we must get back to true repentance. We have, we, we have to live for God daily. We have to be broke free. We have to be free of sin and bondage. Sin creates bondage. But you're a zealot. Yes, I am. If, I, if I'm a zealot for God, then I'm doing something right. If you're accusing me of being a religious zealot for God, for Jesus Christ, then I must be doing my job because... Because Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We cannot continue to ignore God. Like, he's not a servant to us. As John Hagee says, he's not a cosmic bellhop. God, where are you at? I need you right now. You know, Can you come down? And I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you in about six months then. Okay, thanks God. I don't need you now. You know, you can get out of here. Uh, I don't know. Go, go help some people in Africa. Lord, I'm good. I'm cool. We're cool now. <laughs> He's a friend. He wants to help you. Therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Let's believe in what believe. Let's believe what the word says. You are a God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's he that's in me than he that's in the world. Where are you, God? Greater is you. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Or, if we have God and we put him first in our lives, everything will fall into place. Everything will work out. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring liar, walks about seeking whom he can devour. That's why your finances and your marriage and things are ruined. It's not God's fault. It's Satan's fault. He's your adversary. He's your enemy. He's the one that wants to make sure that you're dead and sick and financially ruined. We all know this verse. It says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw not. But it also says before that, submit yourself. See, we forget to submit yourself to God part, don't we? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. To purify your hearts, you double mind. See, that's the problem with today's Christianity. We want all the cute, flowery, Jesus loves you, draw nigh to him. You know, Jesus loves you, resist the devil, and he will flee. God will give you everything you want. He'll give you a yacht, you know, everything's cool. You, you know, but, but we forget to, oh, oh, submit yourself. Oh, well, 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 wait a minute, you know, I don't want, I don't want these hearts. I don't want that part of the scripture. 
speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the, to the Lord, Ephesians 5, 9. Ephesians 6, 11 through 13, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the wiles of the devil, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers of rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on to you the whole armor of God. How much armor? Some of it? All of it. That you may be able to withstand the evil day, having done all the stand. In Deuteronomy 11, it says, Behold, I set before you a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. It's Deuteronomy 11, 26 to 28. If we put God first and obey him, things in our life will go much better. Instead of saying, where are you, God? You will say, I see God right here. And that's what we want. See, God, God cursed the Israelites when they didn't obey him. But you know, he also blessed them. There's people say, oh, but the Bible is so full of violence. If you read the Bible, you know, I used to think that. I think, man, every time I turn around, God's like, boom, striking somebody. He's killing them, Israelites, every 10 seconds. But you know, the more I've read the Old Testament, the more I realized God was patient and merciful. But no, you don't look at all the times God kills people. Do you know how long no, it took God to kill these people? He gave them chance after chance after chance. If it was me, I'd be, I'd be like, you know, we'd be, we'd just, let's face it. If, if any of us were God, we'd be zotting people all day long. And we'd be enjoying it. Ah, oh, gotcha. Oh, let me bring you back to life and zot you again. I'll teach you. That's what we would do. God, God's slow to anger. You've got to remember all these people that, you know, God killed in the Old Testament was over, like, thousands of years, a couple thousand year time. It was, this wasn't like, this wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like, well, Monday God killed all these Israelites, and then Tuesday he killed some more. I mean, this was, this was over hundreds of years. But anyway, if there is anybody out there and you're saying, maybe you feel conviction. And maybe you're not living right for God. Look, don't just say, you know, just don't just pray and ask God. No, understand what sin is. Sin, you're missing the mark. You're missing what God wants. God has a plan for your life. Yeah, he loves you, but you have to repent of, of sin. You, you can't just, you know, you can't just live for the devil. So anybody... Anybody listening, just you know, just pray, Lord. I know that I'm a sinner, Lord. I missed the mark, Lord. I've even gone to church, Lord. I've even professed you as Lord, but Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I have not been living for you. I know I have been doing things that were that were bad and awful. Jesus, come into my heart. I make you King of Kings and Lord of Lords over my life. Thank you. I believe you have rose from the dead. And I believe you died and rose from the dead. And I come into my heart. And I live. I choose you today, Lord. I live for you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I just want to encourage you that if you're not, if you're not living for the Lord... To start, because life will get so much better. It won't. It's not going to take all your problems away from you. It's, uh, you know, but but God's going to be there in the midst of your trial and your tribulation. So I want to thank everybody. I want to thank um, Jesus is Lord Ministries for having me on. If you want to donate to Jesus is Lord Ministries, you can do so by PayPal on WBNTV.org. And I just thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful and blessed evening. If anybody wants to come up for prayer, uh, my wife will come up and we'll be glad to pray over you.